Some people just can't seem to grasp the idea that keeping things organized within your finances can help things keep organized within your overall life. Obviously, in life, there's always unforeseen bills. There's just always things coming up that take your money. You're always spending money on things, whether you like it or not. Sometimes that can make you feel overwhelmed and just feel like things are a bit too much. Things hitting you a lot with bills and whatnot. But don't overthink things because it's a lot simpler than you think. You want to start by asking yourself some questions. So first, how much income am I bringing home on a monthly basis? Next, how often am I getting paid? Bi-monthly, bi-weekly, there's a difference. Uh, monthly, weekly, how is it? What are my total mandatory living expenses per month? So my housing, my utilities, my phone, insurance, transportation, food. How much do I have left after paying for my monthly needs? So after I take care of all those necessities, then what do I have? And then on top of that, what additional monthly expenses am I currently paying for? Gym memberships, subscriptions, those kind of things. And then a crucial detail is what date are each of my bills due each month. That way you know how to plan your you know, financial plan accordingly. After your, all your expenses are deducted, how much discretionary income do you have left over? And then the most important question is what are you doing with that discretionary income? That is absolutely vital to your overall financial plan. Right here, we've got our handy dandy little monthly budget planner template via Google Sheets or Excel, whichever you prefer. Um, in this example, we're looking at an individual We'll say they're bringing home 4000 a month. So that's not how much they're total making gross, but on a net basis, they're bringing home 4000 a month. And we'll say in this budget, everything that's in the budget is actually going to happen. So for housing, for their expenses, 1750 a month, plus utilities, another 250 That's about 2000 bucks a month for housing. For cell phones, we'll say it's 100 bucks a month. Groceries, about 75 a week, we'll say. And we'll just combine groceries and dining out for now. 300 a month. Gas, maybe about 50 a week, 200 a month. Car insurance, 50 bucks a month. Health insurance, another 50 a month. Um, over here, some of these other expenses, you know, gym fees. Um, you've got your streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, Peacock, whatever. Obviously, Netflix... Um, isn't really letting people get away with using other people's accounts anymore so I've got to add that into the budget unfortunately um, but aside from that you know you look up here like we said at the beginning there's 4,000 net income every month then you subtract the total expenses we broke down below in this example it comes out to be a little over 2,700 and then what you get the difference is the net income or the discretionary net income so what that money is is basically the money on a monthly basis you can do whatever with you can spend it you can go out to eat you can go out to do things you can save up for something for a trip a car whatever but that leftover money is crucial up here obviously you can see i've got a bunch of different little spreadsheet templates I've been working on. Um, so just to give you an idea of the different types of budgets, here's a weekly one. This is a more enhanced one for someone looking to keep track of things on a weekly basis. This is just a broader personal budget, looking at it from kind of a yearly perspective um, on a month to month basis. Right here, you could even have a budget for a college student. So this is a little more broader of a budget for a college student, factoring in everything. Um, you could break it down into, you know, respective semesters, individual semesters. Um, but it's good for a college student to start learning that stuff while they're in college. And then once you have a family, you know, you actually have maybe a wife, a kid, children, whatever, even pets. Then you definitely got to get better as far as keeping an eye on your budget and your finances. Right here we've got a family budget planner. Obviously in this slide, once we input data, there would be graphs so you could actually have another way to view things. 
Um, over here, this is a way to just monitor your progress throughout the year, throughout the quarters. And then if you had anything that you wanted to save up for at the beginning of the year, that's where you'd see that. Over here, we've got a household budget. Um, this is kind of the same as a family, but obviously there's different types of households. Right here, it's not always just personal budgets. Here we've got a business, just a simple business template for a budget. Um, they can be more enhanced than that, but you know, within a bid business, obviously there's projects, there's personal projects too. Here's an example of a project. Some people don't like working with spreadsheets and I get that. There is a simpler way to keep track of your finances on a monthly basis. If you have a phone, <laughs> you could just make a note and keep that going consistently. So in this case, same net income on a monthly basis, 4,000. Monthly bills are a tad different this time. Got some student loans factored in. You got the additional things like food and gas. And then this one goes to the extent of even making a plan for the discretionary income, which is great, but simpler. It really is true that the more organized you are with your money, the more organized you are with your life. It's just one of those things where, you know, once you start paying attention to the details and, you know, the different areas and departments within your life, such as your finances, it's only going to benefit you from an overall perspective. So make a plan, stay committed to it, stay disciplined, and overall stay smooth.